All right, let's take a crack at the the rules here for Poland Defiant. So uh, let's talk about the units here first. Hope everybody can see this okay. So obviously your turn chip. Then you got your control markers. They're German on one side, Polish on the other. That's to place in your victory point hexes like Lotz or some any of the red city hexes. Red city, like those are victory point hexes. So whoever controls them, uh, there's just enough counters to cover. I think there's 12 of them. Um, then you got your out of supply and on the back side is isolated. And then you've got your damaged bridge and, uh, <laughs> and damaged bridge. I, I guess they're both on the same. I thought one of them said undamaged, but I guess not. Yeah, they both, they all say damaged. Okay. So damaged bridge on both sides, victory point marker. Um, you're just, you're just tracking it for the, for the Germans. Okay. All right. Germans have a battleship, the Schleswig Holstein. You think I'd be able to say that since I speak German. Um, he sits up in the Baltic, uh, any headquarters can activate him. He, he just go on, on any headquarters turn. He can just go, there's nothing special. And he just got a strength of two. So he's kind of like doing an air attack. He can bombard. Uh, these are like, these are headquarters that didn't have, they have no direct units attached to them. And I'll explain how that works here in a second. These are interdiction aircraft for the Germans. The Poles don't have any. Um, the one means their hex radius. So every hex around them, they, and you just have to read your interdiction rules, just slows movement down on that. Uh, on the first turn of the game though, all of these, the Germans have three of these, two, two in the south, one in the north. They have a two hex radius. Uh, these are the bombers, like your your Stukas and Heinkel 111s, and that's their strength. Um, the Germans have three in the south, and they have two in the north. I think it's like 10 points total in the south and six points in the north, and the Poles have one four strengther. All right, these are independent units. They don't have any color marking on them. They're just a white silhouette, uh, NATO, NATO symbol, and they have no color bars on them. All right, All right so here's a typical unit. It's... Third Army, this is their command. This is their chit you put in the cup to pull for activation. This is their headquarters, all right? Army Group North, Third Army. He's got a command range of six and a movement of four. And these, notice the color, They all these are all his directly subordinate units inside of that uh, that army, okay? Divisions and brigades. Uh, a couple of regiments, there's a regiment right there. And then here's one for the Poles, the Posmen. Uh, army group, army district, and there's its headquarters and they have rail cars. All right. And these guys, when you move these guys in, in a movement phase, when this is activated, they can move unlimited number of rail hexes as long as they stay on a rail hex. Okay. Um, then you got some cavalry infantry, and then this is a unique unit. It's a Ford has no movement factor. This is like a fortified hex and there's a bunch of them in the game. Not very strong. They're more there just to delay stuff. All right, so that's your units. All right, let's get that out of the way, and we're gonna we'll go through the the chart here. All right, so in the air unit phase, which is the first phase of the game, all right. So let's say the Germans will go first. And let's say that you got this unit sitting right here, and you see that red line right there. Above it is I think uh, Luftwaffe one, and below it's Luftwaffe four. So they're marked over there in a box they say one and four and four is pretty much army group south and one is army group north. So this guy here, he's an army group south. So during, uh, during the, during the air phase, the Germans go first and they ground attack. So you would ground attack this guy, strength the four against two, and then you use your terrain and you would roll on your, your combat results table. You'd get an odd. So that would be two to one. Um, and then whatever the train is, you would look on the train effects chart and it would tell you what the, uh, the differences are. Um, these guys, there is a thing for damage in here, but I never came across that. I want to say, yeah, on a, okay, so you have a special thing if you roll a one when these are in combat, uh, you damage the air unit, so it becomes damaged, okay? There's no, I think he has to go on. I think he goes on the turn track for two turns later. You have to look that one up. I never had that incident happen, but you would do it like regular combat. The only difference is, is these guys don't, other than that roll of one, they don't take any damage. And then after the Germans have done theirs, 
then the poles do theirs with their one unit. All right, so once that's done, you come in and you do the interdiction. All right, so let's say the poles have, let's get a couple units here. Let's say the poles have these two units here and they've got this unit down here. All right, so you take your air interdiction marker and you can place them in there and now he affects the movement of all of those around him. I think what it does is it, it cuts their movement allowances in half or it might reduce them by one. Um, on the first turn of the game, these German air interdiction units have a two hex radius. So these guys would all be affected on the first turn. But other th after the first turn, it's all six surrounding hexes or the hex he is in, okay? So also for reinforcements, if you've got a, if one of these guys is sitting in a, in a Polish re reinforcement hex, i.e. like say this, this rail unit, the rail unit can go any, within any rail hex within five hexes of that interdiction unit on that, on that rail line. So if he was sitting here or here, and this was the, this was the hex for that rail unit to come in, he could move five hexes away and come in. If it's a regular combat unit or any other type of unit, they have to come in in that interdicted hex. And so they will suffer the penalties of being interdicted when they come on. All right, the poles don't have any inter air interdiction, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so so they, they'll, they'll stay in the interdicted hex for the duration of the turn, and we'll, at the end of the turn, they get pulled out. As a matter of fact, it's the next to the last phase. It's in the last phase of the turn. There's three little segments, and that's one of them. You just pull them out. You put them back over in their boxes, which are on the edges of the map that you'll, you'll see, the plain as day. All right, let's get those out of the way. And that's the only time you can use them. All right. So that takes care of the air unit phase. Now you got the reinforcement phase and you have each unit for reinforcements. Let me find one here. Like here's a headquarters. Notice he has a four D. So on the map, you'll find you come in on turn four and then you got to find the entry hex. Like you see that black E inside that red circle there. That's an entry hex. So you got to find D, which is, Probably, of course, not in this camera view. Um, nah, I don't know. He's hit probably, oh, he's over here. He's to the right of the screen over here. And you can see it. It's just above Krasnick there. So on the reinforcement phase, you would place them in there. And they can come in over stacked, and then you just make the adjustment after they come in. By the way, stacking, two units to a stack, informational, and I don't think headquarters count either, okay? Nor the air units is there when they're on the map. Um, so get that out of the way. All right, so let's do, that's reinforcement. All right, all right, the command phase. Okay, so the command phase on your turn record chart, which I explained to you in the gameplay, each, the Germans and the Poles have a number of activations they get on that turn. Um, the max is going to be six. Most of the time, the Germans have six and five, and the Poles, they have, I think, one or two. They have one turn where they get six, and then mostly it's five, four, and three. The Germans can be affected by, if they have a certain number of victory points, they have to take each turn, and that's also on the turn record chart. It's in a red number. If they have not met those victory points, then on the next turn, they lose one activation. So if they have an activation of five on, say, turn three, but they did not, they do not have two victory points t uh, accumulated, then they will only get four activations. And you, you put all the chits, the command chits, into the cup, which, like, that's a command chit. That, so whatever command chits are in the game, they go in the cup. But they'll only get to draw four. Once they hit four, they're done. So the Poles might have five draws and the Germans might have three and the Germans might, you know, I had a turn like that too, where they drew, I think three of the four they had were the first three drawn. Then I got a Polish one and then I drew another German one. Where the Germans were done, the Poles still had four more to draw. That's, there's your fog of war. So, and then you have two uh, random chits. They're called action chits. Let's see if I can dig one up here. Uh, there's one on each side, random event. And they actually, they both do the same thing. The Poles is called, uh, theirs is called uh, replacements, and the Germans is called random event. And you have a, a replacement die roll table whenever this chit comes up that you roll on to see if they can get any replacements. Whatever number you get on the replacement roll table, that is one step 
that they can either rebuild a unit, I think it cannot be in an enemy zone of control, or they can bring one back in, one step. I think I had one roll where the rush, and of course you may not draw this thing, because if you go through all the activations, uh, and then you draw this chit after you've completed the activations for that side, you can't use this chit. Or I'm sorry, take that back. Once all the activations are completed for both sides in a turn, these chits are no longer valid. So you have to draw this because it doesn't count towards an activation. You have to draw this within the amount of activations between both sides. So like if you've got four activations for the Germans and you've got four activations for the Poles, before all eight of those activations are done, this chit has to be drawn to be used or else it just it doesn't see the light of day for that turn. And it just stays in there for the next turn. And I, the Germans, I think I drew it once. The Poles, I, Poles fortunately, I've drew it like four times. Because their theirs is in the cup. Uh, I don't know if it's from the start or real near the beginning of the German one. I don't think it comes on to like turn seven. So, all right. So that is all right. So that's that's the command. That's what they call the command segment. Um, all right. So let's do an example here. So let's say that the Germans drew the third army chip. All right. Here's their headquarters. All right. We'll say he's got units here. He's got units here. Oh, uh, he's got a unit back here. He's got a unit in the woods right here. Okay. And we'll say that the Poles have that unit there. And they've got a, uh, an infantry unit. We'll say over here in Radom, one of the victory locations. And maybe they got a rail, one of these rail things in there. Okay. So, all right. So simple process. This chit gets drawn, this headquarters gets activated. Now there are multiple versions of how these activations happen throughout the game. And you'll see, you just have to, it's not many, it's like four or five different changes, but they're pretty simple things. It's just, it just modifies who's in command of what or how somebody can activate. Um, let's put a couple of, uh, let's put a couple of these down. All right, let me put these two back here. Okay, and we'll put, let's see, let's say he's here. And we'll say he's out over here on the other side of the river for some strange reason. Okay, so you draw this guy's command chip. That headquarters is now active. Anybody in his army, his color band, that's within his command range of six, right, and it's hexes, it's not movement points, they can move and they can attack, okay? If they are outside of that, they cannot move and attack. Now, not only can his units move and attack, but he can also activate two independent units. Those are independent units, okay? Now, let's say he was, let's say all of his units were dead. He had no units on board. The only thing left was his headquarters. Well, if you draw his command chit and he has no active, he has no units on the board, they're all dead. He can activate any five units, no matter what they're from, within his command range. All right? So it's like he becomes just completely, you know, Superman and can activate anybody he wants within his command range. Okay? Of course, you really don't want that to happen. All right, so he gets activated, and he decides, okay, well, we're going to move and attack him. Well, I don't like that armor unit because he's, a, well, he's in a, let's say he was here. I don't want him to attack across that little river right there because he gets cut in half. Uh, there's very few cases where your attack factor gets cut in half. So you can always move as long as you have movement points. You can move in enemy zones of control. All right. So for him to cross that river right there would be plus one. All right. The town doesn't mean anything for movement. Um, it's also plus one for the enemy zone of control. So if he was out here and you were moving into that enemy zone of control, so it'd be one for the clear and then an additional point. So it'd be two to get into his zone of control. All right. These kind of things, these rivers and big water and the big pond stuff, those you can zone of controls don't extend across them. Okay. So he could actually move here. He'd go one, two, and he can move there and then he could attack. All right. Or you could move in, but now he's going to get halved because of that river right there. So you probably want him to go over here and attack. So now he's going to attack at his regular strength, four to one. All right. This guy is in that little village. So his first retreat is going to be voided. Yeah. But if you do a cash, if you do a step loss to him, he's going to be eliminated because he has no, 
no step losses. All right. Whereas this guy, he does. All right. You can also move out of an enemy zone control. You can move through it at a cost of additional movement point. So, you know, this would end up being two and this would end up being three, four, five, and then you could move out six like that. All right. So just remember to add the extra movement points when you're doing through a zone of control. Actually, I think I take that back. Zone of control to zone of control is plus three movement points. So if he started here, he could go one, two, three, and then four for the hex he's moving into and then still attack. All right. So keep that in mind. Um, you can also do a strategic move on the, on the, if you start, if you stay out of, start out of zone of control, stay out of zone of control, it's half movement point. So he could actually go one, two, three, uh, four, five, and then just keep right on. And that's how I ended up taking Warsaw in that game. So that's the simplicity of move. A little tougher on the infantry guys because, you, and also remember too, you also have the one hex rule where you can always move one hex. Keep that in mind too. As long as you can normally enter that terrain, it's not prohibited, you can do that. So this infantry guy here, he, it would cost him one, two to get across and then to get into his zone of control three. So he has just enough to do that to get right there. So you might move in here and attack him and attack him. You might have this guy just, he'll just move one hex. Now you do not have to attack everything you're adjacent to in this game, all right? So he might move over there and then maybe the calf comes in here and he goes one, and then two, three for the woods. I think, I don't know what is actually. No, woods don't cost nothing. So one, two, and then an extra one for the zone of control three. So now you got four units in there that can attack this guy. All right? That's your basics of movement for your combat. Rail units like this guy here, if he was moving, as long as it's, because he, he can only move on rail lines. Yeah, so if you get in a spot where he's attacked from both sides and you get a retreat, and he can't retreat because there's no rail line to retreat. He ends up getting eliminated because he's got no place he can retreat to. Also, well, we'll come to that in a minute. We'll come back on it. But if he moves, he can move any number of hexes on the rail line. So once he gets started, he can just keep right on, you know, wherever. So just keep that in mind when you said they got a two two attack factor and they got a one defense rating. I not I don't know. They they didn't serve much purpose for me. They just most of the time you just figure out just get them corner to where they got no place to retreat to. But in that event where you need to move somebody halfway across the map to go protect a hex because you forgot to cover it, <clears throat> Warsaw, me, uh, if I had just drawn a Soviet chip first, I could have probably got over there. Um, they're, they're, they're a good unit because you're, you're probably going to have some rail movement that, or rail lines that are wide open that you can move through. And I could have gone, I think, anywhere from up in the northeast corner all the way down to Krakow in the south, south, central, southwest corner. I could have moved a rail unit. Um, I right, so remember that. He can activate all his units that are within his range. And he can also do two independent units. Or if he has no units available, if all his units are dead and eliminated from the game, he can activate any five units, doesn't matter where they're from. Okay. So you may find cases in this game where the Germans will get these chips come in or these command chips come in on turn seven, I think. So you might draw this chip as one of your activations and you execute your orders with them. Then you turn around and you draw this chip. Well, guess what? You can use them again if you want because they're part of Army Group North. So there's three armies up there and he can activate once with their own commander and then you can activate them again with that. And like I say, there's one for Army Group South. The Russians have one where they combine stuff. And they have one for what they call RUG units, which when you draw this one command chip, there's three different RUG armies or corps or whatever. And you can move all three of them. Or you roll a dice and then the dice will tell you how many of those uh, uh, little corps or armies you can move. So another little, little feature to the game. So keep that in mind. Um, command, command, command. Anything else I need to say about command? Movement. Uh, combat. Like I say, very simple. Odds. Use your terrain key. It's right there on the map. It's not, it's, if you've played any kind of war games over the years, that's, it's simple to figure out, you know, to think about it too hard. Uh, just remember that on the units, first number's attack, second number's defense, last number's movement. Okay. Um, on headquarters, your command range and their movement. All right. And that, that covers it. Your aircraft, we already went over that. 
Uh, all right, and then it goes to the supply phase. So let's get him out of there. Let's put let's put this infantry unit in there. All right, and we're going to leave the same situation. Okay, you have two forms of supply. You have out of supply, and you have isolation. All right. All right, so during the supply phase, if this guy were sitting like that, if the scenario was just like that, he is now out of supply. All right, if at the end of the next turn, it's the same thing, he now gets flipped over to isolated. Okay, so the difference between out of supply and isolated, out of supply, your attack factor is halved, but everything else is normal. Defense is normal and your movement allowance is normal. Isolated, all of them are cut in half. All right, so had this guy been, regardless, supplied or out of supply, he could have still moved it during his move. He could have moved one hex. Right? And now, he, now for supply, let's say he's sitting right there. For him to be in supply, you probably can't see it, but Warsaw is, eh, Warsaw is up here. That's the supply source for the poles. Your supply system is the first four hexes from the unit can be any terrain. But then it has to be on a road or a railroad, free path all the way back to Warsaw. So obviously this rail unit and that infantry unit underneath him, we'll use the infantry unit, he's got a clear shot up the road, right? Or he can, you know, if it was one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, then he touches the road. All right, this guy down here, he can go one, he can go two, three to there, and then boom, he's got a... He's got a network, or he could go one, two, and well, he wouldn't. This German unit sitting out here. Well, no, that's right. Remember, the river does not block it, so he could go one, two, and then now he's got that whole network going back. All right, that's how simple it is. But amazing enough, you can cut these guys off. So by putting units in the right places and having a little distance from from them to you so they can't hit you. Um, I did have a case over in the center of the, in the center section in the Poznan district where I cut them off and then they shifted. And I think I air attacked with the Polish uh, uh, bombers and eliminated a mech unit that only had a one defense strength. So they got back in supply again. Then I turned around and cut them off again the next turn. Um, but the Poznan units, they were able to get out of hex, but they were able to get out and come back and help in the defense, well, almost help in the defense. All right, so that's how supply works. Um, in this particular case here, uh, if this guy were sitting here, then he could supply out, all right? But this doesn't help, all right? Because friendly zones of control do not affect it, all right? That's still an enemy zone of control there, so that's broken, he can't get out supply-wise. And that's how simple supply is in this game, all right? There you have it. That is the base of the game. Then you go to the end of the turn phase where your little air interdiction markers, if you had them on the map, you would take them back and put them in their starting boxes uh, to start for the next turn. Um, if a German unit is sitting in any one of the Warsaw hexes during this phase, the game's over, the Germans have won. And then you, after that, if not, then you move the turn segment to the next game turn. And that is the basic rules of how to play Poland Defiant by Revolution Games. Easy play, uh, good representation. You know, in my opinion, I'm not the authority on it. Um, I think that the Germans, uh, if you use the armor the right way, can pull this off uh, without having to take Warsaw. I think they could actually do the I think it'd be tough, but I think they could do the victory point locations. Some of them are back farther on the game, game map. Um, I also think that the poles, maybe with giving up a few of the frontal, uh, the, the closer to the front line victory locations and could back off. I mean, they could literally, if they backed off to the, the river line that they intended to, um, well, that they actually did or attempted to, they would give up what? One, two, three, four five, six, even though Danzig in, that would be seven. And then defend Warsaw and along the Vista River down to the sand or maybe down to uh, uh, the Vistola, Vistola. And 
Yeah, and then just straight north or north northeast of, of Warsaw along the river lines there, up to Lamza. How they could even give that one if they need to, but they and not give up Warsaw, they they could win a victory in this game. And I think it can be done. I think it might be one of these cases where you need to pull the poles back. Uh, or maybe just keep something up there to delay the Germans. Of course, then again, you know, you might not get the activations to do it. But if you can, getting them pulled back and setting up defense, uh, making them attack you across the streams. Because uh, like I say, you can't attack across the big rivers uh, unless there's a bridge there. And uh, I think I think the polls could win this. I think this game has enough balance you could win win this from either side. All right. Uh, oh yeah. Also, just you know, on the on the edges of the map, there are the little supply markers. You know, the half black white moon thing. Those are your supply points for the uh, for the Germans in this game. So they just need to be able to trace to there. Same same rule. Four hexes, and then it's got to be on a rail or a road. Never had any problems with the German supply in this one. All right, folks, that's it. I hope this helps somebody out and maybe someone will get this on the table and play it. If I miss something or something wasn't clear, hey, drop me a comment and uh, I will answer the question. Rule book's only eight pages long, I think. I mean, yeah, I think the last part of it's the deployment. Uh, yeah, 10, 11 pages, but the last two or three are about setting the game up in the, in the victory condition and stuff like that. All right. Hey, get it out on your table. Play it. Let me know what you think. Have fun with it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this stuff, I, I want to do more of this instructional stuff and be a little... This game was easy. I want to do some of the more detailed ones. Um, if you enjoyed it, give me a like. If you want to keep up to date, subscribe, smack that bell. That way you'll be updated on any new playthrough, review, or session I do. Hey, thanks for watching, gang. Talk to you later.